And we're going to come under attack and under fire, but we're soldiers. We have to put on that armor. Every single day we have to put on that armor. And in order to be a soldier, we're going to have to go through boot camp. What we're going through right now is boot camp. What we're going through right now on this earth before the, the time of tribulation, when the, when all this bad stuff really starts coming, the battle that's really going to come, mm-hmm. all of this is going to train you. All of this is to build endurance because these times are not like the times to come. Right. And in order for us to in order for us to be ready, we have to be able to endure the hardship. We have to be able to know how to struggle so we can be strong. And just like I, I was telling them, this popped in my head that day. Sometimes we're like feeling like the Lord just tossed us out and we're just struggling in the and like the raging waters. But I read that like I read this quote or this quote came to mind. I'd read it like a week before, but he says, The Lord brings you out sometimes to those rough waters where he knows your enemy can't swim. So Sometimes it's because you're going through things and where he has you is where he has you for a reason. He'll even use the tricks and the schemes of the enemy to deliver you a victory. That's exactly what he did to our savior. The devil thought he won when he killed Jesus, but he used the devil's biggest plan to give the greatest victory. So all these struggles that you go through are going to make you one strong person. Like one person. And the reason why I say that, like, when he was sending, when he was sending me these scriptures and I was reading them. I don't know why, but I kept crying and crying and crying. And it's because the Lord, like one, just imagine a father or a mother seeing their children hurting and struggling, and they can't really do much to help them until they're ready and they're asking for the help. But they're at that point where they're mad at you because they feel like you're not helping them. You know, like the Lord can take it. Ooh. It hurts the Lord because he loves you so much and we're so hurt with him, but yet he's still patient. And he's just watching us struggle until we're ready enough to accept that comfort and accept that truth. So, Wow. Wow. That was all I had to say. If you only knew how on target you are, I'm just over here freaking out with you saying that it's the parents are watching and we're mad because they're not coming to our mm-hmm. rescue. Wow. I'm not saying, I'm not commenting because I'm telling you, you have no idea the conversations I had in the last 24 hours. This is so God. So God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much, Lord. You are speaking big time. And I hope those that need to have the ear to ear are really taking this in. Really. Oh, Oh, God, thank you. You know what, you guys? This is what I love about God. Davina wasn't even scheduled to preach today. We were just starting out talking about what she felt led to talk about on Saturday. And it was still in her. See, that's why, you know, you can't have a preconceived notion as to what God's going to do all the time. Because all the best laid plans of mice and men, (laughs) yeah. But God has a plan. And there are times, no matter what we think we're supposed to deal with, God will come through from a conversation that will turn right into a sermon. And Davina brought a word just now. When it seems like God is nowhere in sight, just like the mother of Ray would not come and coddle her son when he fell. As a result of letting him process that whole experience as a blind child, having lost his eyesight, he began to hear a cricket walking across the ground. And he got so engrossed with the cricket, he forgot he had fallen and he forgot he he was crying. It turned out to be another experience with a different level of revelation, a a different connection took place as a result of mommy not coming to the rescue too soon. He wasn't hurt. She knew it, but he had to process that experience. Now, there are times when God allows us. I was in the ocean out at the beach years ago, swimming, getting ready to go out and swim. And a wave came. And boy, I did not know how strong that riptide was. Pulled me out. And then 
I felt led, even though I wasn't saved, I felt led to swim back diagonally. So I swam on my back so I wouldn't get tired. I got to a certain point where my feet could hit the ground just a little bit. And then another wave came and it knocked me in, knocked the bajazzes out of me. Didn't see it coming. But guess what that wave did? When that wave got through and everything was said and done, and I put my feet where the sand was, I stood up. And now when the water was receding, it was down around my knees. I was right there at the coastline. Was able to walk into shore. So there are times when things will drag you and make you topsy-turvy. You got to be still. You can't panic during those times. When you're still, you can hear instruction. The first instruction I got was be still and the sand will reveal itself. It will hit you in the head, in the back, on the shoulder, on your legs, somewhere. But that's where you put your feet because that's bottom. I had no idea what bottom and where up and down was. So when I put my feet there, I pushed myself up. Then I started swimming in diagonal. I got to a certain point. There's a lot of, of grinding going on. So I'm going to mute the mics for a second. Okay. Now, so I was sitting there trying to come in. I got to a certain point and another wave came and knocked the bajazzes out of me. And I'm feeling beat up by now. But that second wave was what it took to take me all the way into shore. So there are times you must be still. You cannot be so quick to react to what you're going through. Never make emotional decisions. Never. That's the worst thing you could ever do. Make emotional decisions. You will sabotage your life doing that crap. You wait till everything settles down. You be still and know that he is God, not you, not your emotions, not the circumstances, not the problems, not the depression, not your fears, none of that. God, be still and know that God is God. When things are settled, what happens? You start to get your bearings. You start to know what to do next. Instinct starts to kick in. And instinct is led by the Holy Spirit. When you got the Holy Spirit in you. Now, sometimes another problem will happen. Like Davina said. And that problem would take you right to your solution. Just like it did me.